Thank you very much uh, to our MC, Doc Murisa. Uh, let me recognize the guest of honor, who happens to be my Mbuya, Gogo Beatrice Mutetwa, the president of Triple uh, C, and uh, all the leaders, all government officials here present, Muria Kwama Gaisa, my Magaisa, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Peace and grace to you all. My heartfelt condolences to all of you. Particularly also his numerous followers. 250,000 readers, as you say, uh, Doc Murisa, is no mean feat. Where was I when I heard the news? You know, fancy that, I was right here at this church. This is where I fellowship. And Pastor Tom had just preached a, a storm, preached up a storm. Um, it was um, that sort of Sunday where you go, you hear a message and you leave and you're kind of bewildered. And I left here. And I went down Churchill, Churchill Road, and uh, at the corner of Second Street Extension, there was a huge truck passed there, parked there, that had broken down. And my wife, in her wisdom, urged me to reverse the car and go the other way, which I did. I did that and tried to just turn ahead of the truck and lo and behold, we had a car crash. Someone smashed into us, and we missed death by a whisker. And I mean, I was just, I was in total shock. I'm still, I'm still quite shaken. I held my phone, deciding who to call. And then uh, Zizi, um, Zreva Zreva, you might actually be in here. Zizi? No, he's not. And he sent me a message right there and then that Alex had passed away. You can well imagine what impact that had on me. I had just missed death by a whisker. And so I was quite devastated upon hearing the news and uh, deeply saddened that that could have been me on the same day almost at the same time. But here was what crossed my mind. I couldn't help but think that my affairs were not in order. I had to come to that conclusion. I was not ready. And Bishop Magaya has just delivered a message encouraging us to be ready. We just don't know when anything can happen. My pastor had just urged us, and I'm an elder in this, this very ministry, but I concluded there and there that I wasn't ready. And so it was so heartbreaking hearing that a good man, who was a yardstick of humbleness, had just passed on. What a loss to the country. I can only assume that the organizers of this memorial lecture would have been tracking the threads of our conversations on social media platforms, either on Twitter or on the private WhatsApp message, message uh, groups that I am in. I was just counting today that I was actually in nine groups where Alex participated in. He was a thought leader. And I can only imagine that it is the tussling that I had with Alex, just as an economist and as a businessman, that led them to think that I was actually a close friend. The reality is I actually never met the guy. And yet, he was like a brother. And I viewed him as such. I remember thinking in those groups and reading the BSR, as I did so religiously, thinking, where does this chap get the time 
to write so prolifically. He never seemed to tire in terms of arguing a point. He was so deep, so well-meaning, so passionate, if not patriotic. He loved this country so deeply. My view was he was wise beyond his age. He was very discerning. I actually first came across him indirectly when as a young global leader of the World Economic Forum, soon after the GNU, I sought, I asked Professor Schwab of the World Economic Forum that I had never as a young leader seen our two leaders together in public. And so I wanted to pull off what looked like an impossible feat. I wanted to get the late Robert Gabriel Mugabe and the late Prime Minister Morgan Shangirai together in one room in a public forum. The easier one was Mkoma um, Morgan. So I rang him. And he said, well, let me take counsel. And I said, Mkoma, who do you take counsel from? This is a clear in invitation. That's when I got to know that there's this guy called Alex. So I thought, kachu. So he agreed, and then I went on to the more difficult task. And Ram Gabe was very difficult. <laughs> said, Vanundi Tuka, why do you want them, you know, to do that? And I said, it will do the nation a lot of good in terms of international capital. And so we're able to get them together in Dar es Salaam. And for the first time, they appeared in one room. In fact, there were three of them with uh, Deputy Prime Minister Arthur Mutambara. So Alex, to me, was like those that Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 3, verses 2 to 3. It says, no, you yourselves are our letter of recommendation, our credentials written in your hearts to be known, perceived, recognized, and read by everybody. You show and make obvious that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, not written with ink, but with the spirit of the living God not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Dr. Alex's life was truly a letter written in our hearts. Everyone read him and recognized his good work amongst us. His humility touched us. Though he was an academic, he reached out to the commoner. Now that's what I call a pracademic. Hardly ever using high-sounding vocabulary or burying his explanations in legal jargon, his explanations were not in Latin. I consumed, therefore, his tweets and BSR wholesome. I never had to eat the meat and throw away the bones. I chewed literally everything that he wrote. So how did I get to catch Dr. Alex? attention and actually merit being here this evening. It all began some three years ago when I insulted his soccer team, Arsenal, <laughs> otherwise known as the Gunners. They began to play so badly that I developed a nickname for them on Twitter and called them Wapanavereken. In other words, the catapult boys on Twitter. This incensed Alex. He immediately shot back with one word in his normally prolific way. He just said, Mukoma, and he put an exclamation mark. <laughs> I knew I was in trouble. All he was saying is, how dare you? But that conversation earned me not just a friendship, but a brotherhood via Twitter. And here are my three takeaways for which I hope we will remember Alex in all the conversations that I then had with him subsequently. Number one, don't mess with constitutional matters and trample on other people's rights 
for the expediency of power. Number two, the rural folks are people too, worthy of title to the land that they occupy. And I know uh, the late R. Jim Gabe would have none of it because he argued, and this is, these are points that I kept make, making to, to Alex, that it would end up in the hands of foreigners or capitalists. But Alex said they are no less than you township guys. They need title to their land. The third one was that clearly we need to reduce the political risk premium that hangs over Zimbabwe. And the key lies in constitutionalism. These are my three takeaways. I want to commend his colleagues in the Constitutional Law Center and friends and commend them for this befitting tribute of having this memorial lecture. In my humble view, I would advocate that this be an annual ritual in memory of the great Dr. Alex Magaisa. I also want to challenge his mentees, the ones that worked with him, his students, that some form of BSR should continue. That is my deep, 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 deep desire. Let me close by a comforting scripture, 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through to 18. And I'll read this quickly. It says, now also we do not have you ignorant, brethren, about those who will fall asleep in death, that you may not grieve for them as the rest do who have no hope beyond the grave. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will also bring with him through Jesus who have fallen asleep in death. For this we declare to you by the Lord's own word, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed into his presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him in death. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry of summons, with a shout of, an, of the archangel, and with the blast of the triumph, triumph, trumpet of God. And those who have departed in this life, Christ will, will rise first. Then we, the living ones who remain on earth, shall simultaneously be caught up along with the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so always, through the eternity of eternities, we shall be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words. I thank you. <laughs>